This morning, I woke up at 7, not 6. I brushed my teeth. I took a shower. I got ready for school. I ate some breakfast. The breakfast wasn't particularly special, but it definitely wasn't anything bad, you know? It's kind of like the morning commute, where the streets weren't completely filled with traffic, but they weren't completely empty either. Anyways, I got to school, I went to class, I sort of paid attention, and then I went down the stairs to the canteen, and then I started thinking about what I was going to do when I got home. And before I go on any longer, how many sentences into that riveting story did you feel the need to think about or do anything else that was remotely more exciting? It's precisely that feeling, that impulse that I want to talk about today. And it happens far more often than you might realize. For example, you've gotten into a fight with your parents or had a falling out with a friend. You think, God, I cannot believe that they would say something like that to me. Your feelings are hurt, your ego is bruised, but you know that dealing, in front, dealing with it means digging it all back up and adding further insult to injury. The situation in front of you doesn't look great. Instead, plugging into your favorite video game and getting completely lost for the next few hours sounds like a much better alternative. Now, if this example doesn't strike a chord, maybe the next one will. It's Saturday morning, and the list of things that you need done by Monday is as long as it has ever been. The sheer stress and lingering workload is killing your weekend vibe. But by a stroke of luck, you swear your favorite show was just added to Netflix. And that seems to take up your time for the next two days straight. Still no luck? Hopefully this last example will strike a chord with you. Exams are approaching. You know that there's a lot riding on these results. You don't want to let down your parents, your teachers expect more from you, and you want to meet your own goals and succeed. All of that pressure, and now suddenly the last thing that comes to mind is picking up a textbook and getting started. What comes to mind instead is immersing yourself in your favorite fantasy novel, or listening to music, or even just using your phone. Anything where your worries become distant and a new preferable reality replaces your own. Now, this might sound a lot like procrastination, but in reality, it's something a lot more complex than that. It's a psychological tendency known as escapism. Escapism is the tendency to seek distraction or relief from unpleasant realities by engaging in fantasy or seeking entertainment. In the most basic of explanations, when we're faced with negative emotions and their cause, be it stress, anger, anxiety, grief, even boredom, given the option, we will always choose relief a temporary change to our reality where this burden is no longer at the forefront. The issue is, in many of the, mo in the modern day situations that a teenager may choose to indulge in escapism, begin to resemble procrastination a lot. Combined with the idea that delaying productivity is seen as a repellent and negative quality, the phenomenon of escapism is gaining a growing stigma. But this isn't the entire truth and we can understand escapism in the way that we biologically process our emotions. Now, bear with me here, but this is the limbic system. It's a set of structures in our brain responsible for emotional processing and response. It contains the thalamus, the amygdala, the hippocampus, and the hypothalamus. The thalamus relays sensory signals to the amygdala, where they are then assigned a certain emotional significance based on previous memories. The hippocampus, where memories are stored, allows you to make a decision based on your previous memories of that emotion. Finally, the hypothalamus will regulate a release of hormones, resulting in the physical way that you might feel a certain emotion. What this roughly translates to is, say that exams are coming up. Your sensory organs, like your eyes and ears, allow you to take in that information, be it through listening to your teachers or reading announcements. That sensory information is relayed by the thalamus to the amygdala. The amygdala will then assign a negative emotional significance to it based on your previous experiences. Through this, your hippocampus is able to coordinate a response with the hypothalamus based on your previous experiences with exams. It recalls the stress, the anxiety, maybe even the disappointment, and it coordinates a response a release of adrenaline and cortisol, which are stress hormones. 
your heart starts to race, your palms get clammy, your mouth gets dry, and the entire notion begins to repel you, and you want to do anything to get rid of it. So what do you do instead? Our nature dictates that we choose to get rid of this unpleasant situation and replace it with a more preferable alternative. Attain a momentary reprieve from the burden that is in front of you. Now, remember the limbic system. Within it is something known as the brain reward pathway. It's a specific circuit in your brain that communicates using dopamine, which is a feel-good molecule. So when a specific action or experience triggers this pathway, it releases a rush of dopamine, causing feelings of pleasure and fulfillment and enjoyment and happiness. So not only does dopamine have this gratifying effect, but it also strengthens that pathway. That means that it's going to enhance memories of this reward and tell your brain, hey, remember that action or experience because it made you feel good. Now, you might be wondering what exactly this means in terms of escapism. So let's take a common escapist activity for a teenager, using social media. You open your phone for five minutes, and next thing you know, three hours have passed you by. Each time you look at a new post or video on your feed, your brain anticipates a positive outcome based on previous experiences. A funny picture, a cute video, a constant stream of entertainment. And each time, it triggers this pathway and re results in the release of dopamine, making you feel good and reinforcing that same behavior. Now, the same goes for any other escapist activity, be it reading a book or listening to music or even taking a nap. The reliable anticipation of a positive and entertaining outcome makes it a much more preferable reality than the one that you might be in. So. The next time you choose to remove yourself from the punishing and off-putting situation in front of you, know that it may not be you being lazy or apathetic, but part of a mechanism built into your biology and psychology. But before you start using this as an excuse for why you didn't finish that assessment or why you haven't gotten up all day, it's not that simple. Unlike the generations before us, we consume media like never before. With the dawn of virtual realities and online worlds, it has never been easier to immerse yourself and lose yourself in an alternate reality. But what does this mean for us? Will we become a generation of escapists, ill-equipped to face all of the challenges that lie in front of us? In a survey I conducted of a group of teenagers, 72.7% .7 said that they believed they ex experienced some form of escapism almost on a daily basis. Some of the most common activities were things that you might be guilty of, excessive use of social media, binge watching shows, or just excessively napping. But the most important thing to note here is the impact that they felt that it had on their lifestyle. Things such as, I feel like escapism sets up almost a distaste for real life because what you're escaping to almost always seems to be greater than reality. Or it provides me with instantaneous relief but in the long run, it isn't healthy because it makes me less productive. This is exactly the distinction that we need to learn to make. Escapism is an incredibly important coping tool. The temporary distraction from a stressful situation that it provides us with can give us the distance and mental relaxation that we need to better understand and respond to the challenge that's in front of us. In times of extreme psychological duress, such as after a traumatic event or grieving the loss of a loved one, Escapism in the form of engaging with storytelling or picking up a new hobby can provide people with the hope and insight that they need to keep going. And the pain and the power of distraction is not to be underestimated, with it even being able to alleviate the, phys the physical sensation of pain. So, as a coping strategy as well as a mood and stress management tool, escapism will remain a necessary and unavoidable habit that we all have. The problem arises when we are no longer able to make this distinction between a healthy coping mechanism and a time-consuming mental block that distances us from our loved ones, responsibilities, and our own personal growth. In gaming and internet addictions, primarily which affect teenagers, one of the most common tendencies of those affected is escapism. And while escapism might not always be a precursor to something as severe as addiction, it is part of something that we are all guilty of on a daily basis, procrastination. But 
by learning how to recognize times of your own unnecessary or excessive escapist activities, we find the key to staying anchored to our own realities, keeping us from becoming distant from each other, keeping us connected to each other, as well as keeping us moving forward. But the question remains, in a generation where time travel, superheroes, and traveling to the edge of the galaxy are available at the touch of your fingertips, will we become the generation that learns from this creativity and leisure and advances, or will we become the generation that gets lost in the illusion forever? Thank you.